Great Bubble. Economics professor Max Otta warned of the world financial crisis long before it happened. Almost no one listened. Now he's warning about the next great speculative bubble. We are treating the crisis with the same medicine that gave us the last bubble. That means we're laying the foundations for the next bubble, and it's already starting to form somewhere. It's a danger that politicians say they're aware of. The German government and finance committees in the parliament, the Bundestag, are worried. The crisis is not yet past. It's continuing, and we must keep a sharp eye on how it develops. Rampant speculation in poorly understood investment instruments helped cause the 2008 crash and triggered panic on worldwide equity markets. Total losses are estimated at around $5 trillion. Taxpayers funded huge stimulus packages, and governments injected hundreds of billions of dollars into financial institutions to make sure they could continue to provide the credit that a functioning economy needs. The money supply rapidly increased, but Otta says banks refused to make it available as credit, meaning businesses could not borrow money when they needed it. The credit business takes longer, of course, because lenders have to be more careful. That's a burden because deals are on the books longer and yields are smaller. That's not as attractive for some investors as making the fast bucks with speculative deals. Politicians have been trying to change that by imposing tougher rules on global financial institutions. Political leaders at summits in Pittsburgh, London or Berlin reiterate their determination to get control of the financial markets. We recognize that all financial markets, products and participants, including hedge funds and ratings agencies and other private services, should of course be subject to supervision and regulation. The implementation of such plans, however, says Professor Otto, has met with stubborn resistance from bankers. Naturally, the banks will try to negate those efforts in small ways whenever they can, and if no one checks on it because half a year later other issues dominate the summits, then they've won. Germany's finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble apparently agrees. He intends to take financial regulation seriously, at least in Germany, by authorizing the Bundesbank to centrally regulate banks, insurers and bond insurers. The head of the Bundestag's banking committee is skeptical. Where will the Bundesbank find the necessary experts? It's not possible to staff banking regulators with the best people if you can't pay them. Because high pay is common in the finance industry, you can't have all the best people working for the side that's supposed to be regulated, while excellence isn't rewarded on the side that's doing the regulating. Speculation remains a big part of financial markets. One lucrative victim has been Greece. Some speculators are betting that the Greek government will default on its debts. They hold derivatives that could be worth 85 billion euros if Greece goes bankrupt. There are no rules governing when and where such instruments can be used. Banks continue to use derivatives, including for speculation against Greece. Hedge funds are also using them, and no one can stop it or even wants to stop it. It's a very serious situation, and it's not just Greece that's facing difficulty. What we're seeing is more or less just the tip of the iceberg. Germany and France are taking the lead in an effort to contain the damage. Chancellor Merkel and French Prime Minister François Fillon want to stop speculators from gambling on state defaults. Professor Otto says only governments can take the steps necessary to stop abuses by speculators. We're suffering from the failures of the last 20 years. Politicians happily deregulated everything. And now we've noticed that we're driving down a highway with no lanes and no guardrails, and that, of course, leads to accidents. Which means it's just a matter of time until the next crash.